A very good evening to you. Our guests on After Dark this evening are all men, which may say something about the matter we're discussing. We'll be talking about spies and traitors, the shadowy world of intelligence and counterintelligence. In recent weeks, viewers on Channel 4 have been able to follow the fictional events of a TV drama called A Very British Coup. It's the story of how British intelligence tried to bring down a democratically elected Labour government. For some of the people here this evening, it may all be a little too close to reality. Yet this may be their last opportunity to discuss intelligence matters in public because in a few weeks' time the law lords will rule on whether secret service officers like Peter Wright should operate under a lifelong oath of silence. Are the security services accountable? Are they above the law? What is national security and who defines it? At what point does an open society suddenly close? These questions are particularly important to our guests this evening. Let me introduce you to them. As Secretary of State for Northern Ireland and then Home Secretary, Merlin Rees was closer than almost anybody else at the time to the secret world of intelligence. In 1971, he sat on the committee that examined Section 2 of the Official Secrets Act. More recently, he's been at the forefront of calls for an investigation into Peter Wright's spycatcher allegations. H. Montgomery Hyde joined the British Secret Service at the beginning of the Second World War. A journalist, historian, Ulster Unionist MP, he's also written no fewer than 55 books. His range of acquaintances included Guy Burgess and the late Duke of Windsor. Robert Harbinson is a writer, composer and lecturer on architecture. In the 1970s, his friendship with the traitor Anthony Blunt led him to contact the Sussex police. How that links with questions being asked in Parliament about the Kinkora Boys' Home in Northern Ireland is something he may be able to explain to us. Air Commodore Alistair Mackey took part in the D-Day operation and the Battle of Arnhem. In the early 60s, he was seconded to work as a Cabinet Secretary on the Joint Intelligence Committee. In 1968, he left the military because he disagreed with Britain's nuclear deterrent. He is now Vice President of CND. Robin Ramsey was born in Edinburgh. He's the editor of a magazine called Lobster, described in a recent newspaper article by the Tory MP Ray Whitney as an obscure publication that regularly carries names of alleged members of the security services, providing the opportunity for them to be reproduced in the national media. Such instances, Mr Whitney went on, greatly increase the risks of attacks on security officers by terrorists and others. Jock Kane was a radio operator at GCHQ, the government organisation that intercepts communications all over the world. Later this evening, he may explain to us why he left GCHQ and why he thinks his two books on the intelligence community have both been blocked by the government. And finally, Gary Murray. Gary worked for the security arm of the RAF before leaving to become a private investigator and then a freelance for the security services. Mr Murray is also a journalist who has investigated the death of anti-nuclear campaigner Hilda Murrell. Mr Murray, let me begin, if I may, with you.